This is Sonia Hicks, and you're watching New Beginnings. And this is my talk show. And tonight I'm excited about a group of high school students who are here to present to you who may not have seen their robot, Dr. Swoosh. Uh, I'm really happy to be back on the air. I haven't been on for a month or so. And we're going to let the students introduce themselves, and we're going to talk about this robot. We're going to see this robot do some things, and we hope that you enjoy this program. What we didn't get, I don't think, is their contact information, but they'll tell it to you at the end in case you're interested in contributing rather something that they may need helping them out because I think this is a wonderful thing for them to be doing. And we'll start with the first young lady. Hi, my name is Leslie Gill. Um, I'm a senior at Ithaca High School this year. I've been on the team for three years, and for two of them I've been the Community Service and Outreach Coordinator. Hi, my name is Hannah Thompson. I am also a senior at Ithaca High School. I've been on the team for three years. I am head of batteries, safety captain, and pit manager. My name is Cameron Burbank. This is my second year on the team. I am a sophomore in high school, and for the last two years I have been a machinist making various parts for the robot. Hi, my name is Amy Barker. I'm a senior on the team. This is my third year. Um, I work on the website and do all sorts of odds and ends, such as making awards. My name is Phoebe Patwell, and I'm also a senior at Ithaca High School. Um, I've been on the team for four years, and for two of those years, I've been the administrator on the team. Hi, my name is Jolyn Berger. Um, I'm a senior at Ithaca High School, and this is my second year on the team. I, am, I just found out that I am co-head of the electronics team on the robotics team, so that's very exciting. And I also worked on our um, control panel last year. Hi, my name is Ishvan Burbank. I've been on the team for four years. I'm a senior in high school, and I'm serving my second term as team president. And of course, I've already told you I'm Sonia Hicks, so let's get to it. So what, uh, we'll start with Cameron. What interested you in becoming a part of this team? I am actually Istvan's brother, and that is how I heard about it. And I have always been interested in machining and doing that sort of thing. I've done a lot of that on my own time and was looking forward to doing this. So I decided to join the team as a machinist. OK. And he Hannah, I got it right. Hannah, when I met you, it was at an, a function at Southside Community Center, and there were some small robots on the board. And uh, do, you, do you usually have those small robots, and what are they called? So those were called hex bugs, um, and we sell them as part of a fundraiser that we do. Um, we also sell um, light bulbs that are very energy efficient, and that's part of a, um, that's sponsored by our sponsor, as we are Team 639, part of an or umbrella organization called First Robotics, and they were the people that facilitated that f specific fundraiser, and we sell hex bugs on our own. Okay. Now, uh, you know, I don't remember. So anyway, Amy? Okay. And I want to ask Leslie? Yeah. Leslie. Audience, you know I don't know what I'm doing, right? Okay, uh, I want to know about your fundraising efforts. What is it like? And how much can you fundraise? I'm really trying to ask this young lady here, mm. not Amy and not Phoebe. Phoebe. Um, this is Phoebe? Yes. Okay, so Phoebe. We are one of the most successful um, clubs at the high school, actually, at fundraising. Most of our fundraising comes from corporate sponsors, which are, tend to be companies from around the area, like Borg Warner and Kionics. Um, we heavily rely on them because it costs around $40,000 to build this robot every year and just to keep the team running. But we also have several fundraisers going, like the Hexbugs and the LED uh, Watt Saver, or e Watt Savers is what they are called. Um, we actually sold the second most LED wa uh, e watt savers in all of the first organization. Um, and as such, we earned $1,000 to put toward fundraising more for that. Um, it is so important to us that we get this funding, and our community sponsors and our corporate sponsors are really key in getting that funding. 
Can you, before we go any further with more questions, can you right now show us something that 639 Dr. Swoosh, Swoosh can, can do? Sure thing. So every year uh, we build a robot to play a different game. And this year was a modified version of basketball. So the game is played with six robots in the field at a time. Uh, three robots versus three robots. And so the robots can drive around on the field um, where we can drive up to baskets and actually shoot these foam basketballs into a basket. Part of the game is also playing defense. Um, and then in the middle of the game, or at the very end of the game, there's a section where we can balance on teeter-totters with other robots to gain a huge benefit in the score. Is that right? Now, how many moving parts, I'm going to get technical, <laughs> would you say this robot has? Uh, there are countless moving parts. Probably in the shooter alone, we have 50. The shooter is what actually shot that basketball. Okay. Uh, the drivetrain probably has another 50. Um, but like I said, there are countless moving parts overall. And, and each one of you had a part in putting this robot together? So what did you do? Let's, let's go down the line this way. What did you do to put it together? What part? Well, I was on the robotics team. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> electronics team, sorry. So my main part of what I did on the robot was after all of the mechanics were put together, mm -hmm. I um, worked with a couple other people to wire everything up so that it actually did something. So we wired all the motors, we wired all the Jaguars and everything so that it actually moves. As administrator, I chose to let the, uh, the rest of the team do most of the work. Um, but what I did do is I actually screen printed all of the numbers on the bumpers. All right. As a general team member, I helped um, brainstorm ideas and uh, help narrow down different ideas for specifics, such as the shooter or drivetrain. But we didn't really, yeah, <laughs> we didn't, we pretty much had one idea for the drivetrain. But. And as a machinist, I mostly sat at my lathe the whole time. Just about everything round on here I had a part in making. So some of the wheels in the drivetrain, um, all the rods, axles that hold everything together, I took part in that. So um, I was part of battery team and I, you know, try and keep the batteries working f and functioning properly. And I also remember um, one build night getting to help solder one of the motors on. But the cool thing about Code Red is that you have so many different aspects. You have the machining and the physical building of the robot, but then you also have media, and you have things like what Phoebe does and what Amy do. Um, and you don't have to be techie to be on the team, which I think is really cool. I'm a machinist and more specifically a welder. Um, Code Red uses TIG welding to weld their joints. Um, some of our welding is a little bit too complicated to do in-house, but we do um, perform most of our own welding, which is pretty interesting. So that's what I did mostly during the season. Where did the design for this robot in particular come from? So FIRST, uh, which is the international organization that creates the game, that stands for For the Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology, uh, releases a game to each of its 4,000 teams around the world at the beginning of January. Uh, and this game comes with a pretty thick rule book of restrictions uh, and explanations of how the field, or how the court uh, this year, will be set up. And from there, our team generates ideas. We brainstorm uh, ways to play the game, mechanisms we can use to fulfill that strategy. And then we break off into smaller teams to uh, design each of the subsystems on the robot, for example, the shooter or the drivetrain. 4,000 teams. Now, last year, you all came in high on the competition, is that correct? Um, yes, we did. We actually placed in the top 1% of teams in all of FIRST. Um, what, hap what happens at the finals is that there are four games being played at once at championships, and then the winners of those games go on to play an additional uh, set of rounds. Um, and we made it to the finals of our game. And so we were very, very proud at, of how far we went this year. And what kind of award did you win? 
Um, this year we won the Engineering Inspiration Award, which commended us for both our um, amazing increase in outreach and community service, thanks to Leslie, and also just our, in our design, which is completely unique to all of FIRST. We're one of the few teams in all of FIRST that can do treads very well. So when, when FIRST sent you the book, they didn't give you the, the design particularly. Is that what you're saying? They just said, we want your robot to do this? Exactly. So they gave us that challenge, and we create our own design. We actually designed the entire robot on a computer first. And then from that computer model, we created all the physical parts that we bolted together to make the robot. Did you have anything that you had as an example that gave you the thought process, that gave you the idea? Was there anything that you uh, had seen prior to creating this? Sure. Um, so we've actually had this team running for several years, and we've had past robots. And so a lot of us on this team uh, have experience with those robots and have learned lessons about the design um, and what works, what doesn't work. We've also collaborated with other teams to try to generate some better ideas and make the best robot we can. I don't know if someone has something to add to that. <laughs> OK. So future, how about that? We'll start with. Cameron, okay. all right, what, what, do, what do you foresee in your future? Do you see a future in robotics or other things? I see a huge, huge future in robotics, especially because through the years, our robotics presence has increased hugely in America and in many other parts of the world. If you look around at things such as your car, you may find that Half of that was done by a robot, all the welds, and all of that was done by people who do the same type of thing as we do. So there is a huge future in robotics for everybody. Okay, ladies, what are your plans? What are your future plans? Um, no. Oh, okay. um, well, my plans, well, my career plans are that I want to become a doctor, okay. oh, as, long as, as well as a lot of different things. But first, really helped me figure that out since uh, part of part of their message is really helping the community and help spread the message of first. And um, through that, Code Red Robotics has done a ton of volunteering, and I found that I really love helping everyone, and that's really how I figured out my career. Um, for me, I came into robotics wanting to go into some sort of theater. Um, and then after my first year, I decided an engineer was really what I wanted to be. Um, and since joining Code Red, I've actually kind of developed an interest in industrial engineering, um, which combines a lot of the man uh, managerial aspects and just working with engineers and things like that and working with efficiency. and. It seems like a perfect fit for me, and without FIRST and without robotics, I never would have found that. Leslie? Um, I'm not exactly sure what I want to do. <laughs> I'm thinking something in the medical field, but I definitely think robotics has had a huge impact on my life. Um, at competition, companies and schools will come and recruit FIRST team members, specifically because they know that we've been trained in skills that will help us throughout our future and really through any career path you take, whether it's theater or engineering or medical studies. It's really had a giant impact on an entire community of people, and I think that's really important. So I know that I'll be able to use what I've learned no matter what I end up doing. And Jolyn? Well, I started robotics last year, and at that point I thought that I was just going to major in biology. But now that I'm really interested in engineering and I've started with electrical engineering, I kind of want to bring that into what I already knew that I wanted to do in the sciences. So um, first robotics has really made me decide that I want to major in biomedical engineering. So it's combining my biology interests and my engineering interests. Okay, and Hannah. Um, so I'm a little bit like jo 